Announced alongside its RTX 30 series graphics cards, NVIDIA's Reflex feature promises significant advantages in minimizing game latency on PC. Team Green's own testing revealing results on par with moving from a controller to a low latency mouse, or even offering up a reduction in lag comparable with an upgrade to a higher refresh rate display. The advantages of lower latency are usually showcased on eSports titles where tighter controls make all of the difference. But in this video, brought to you by Digital Foundry and NVIDIA, focus is going to be a little different. Yes, we'll be looking at the before and after in latency once Reflex is enabled. And yes, there will obviously be some competitive FPS testing. But looking at the list of supported titles, well, it turns out that Reflex goes beyond eSports alone. A lot of the supported games are more closely associated with consoles, which makes for some alternative but no less intriguing test cases as we stack up PC with Reflex on up against Sony's PlayStation 5. So we've got a range of games tested in this video encompassing a healthy crossover between console and PC gaming. And of course, we can't ignore those first-person heavyweights like Call of Duty, Black Ops, Cold War and Fortnite. Both support NVIDIA Reflex and we'll be taking a look at them. But we'll also be checking out Deathloop, Destiny 2 and the PC port of PlayStation's God of War. Of course, in an ideal world, Reflex would work on every game, but similar to DLSS, it requires bespoke integration by the developer into the game engine to minimize bottlenecks at the engine level. Okay, so exactly what is Reflex? Fundamentally, NVIDIA offers up a unique SDK that each developer directly integrates into their game code. That's the bottom line. Supported, uh, from Maxwell GPUs upwards, so essentially GTX 900 series up, and aims to reduce bottlenecks in a game's engine and its use of the CPU. So to put this into perspective, the pipeline between a mouse click and the resultant on-screen response has many stages. Your input device, drivers, the game engine, renderer, and of course the monitor at the end of the pipeline all add milliseconds of delay, comprising the so-called end-to-end latency. Reflex then focuses on one of the bigger potential causes of latency, the game engine and the renderer. To make an impact, Reflex tries to prevent queues from stacking up in the render queue between the CPU and GPU, or in other words, after the CPU has done its work on one frame, it's able to be instantly processed by the GPU, and this helps to keep latency very, very low. Okay, so with that established, how do you go about testing controller response? Well, basically, we used the same methodology we used when we reviewed the GeForce Now RTX 3080 cloud service, and that involves testing using NVIDIA's LDAT sensor. Now, this attaches to the front of the screen. It registers a mouse click or a controller button press, and then detects a gun's muzzle flash as the response on screen. Then it calculates the time between the input and a change in luminance on screen. So there's really nothing particularly glamorous about this process, honestly. In Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, for example, it's literally a case of taking a handgun to a dark corner of the first campaign level and repeatedly firing single shots. After 50 to 100 samples, the LDAT software generates the average latency in milliseconds. So there's our result. To test, we set up a brand new PC based around a Ryzen 7 5700X CPU paired with NVIDIA's RTX 3060 Ti. So this is not an absolute state-of-the-art system as such. Similar to a console, we were looking for a balance of cost and performance. As for the monitor, there we do go all out. This is the ASUS PG259QN 360Hz display. And while all testing will be limited to 1080p on this display for the PC side, and for 120 hertz, it's among the best-in-class IPS panels for low latency. Other than that, for the input method, we used PlayStation 5's DualSense controller on both PC and PS5 uh, for Deathloop, God of War and Destiny 2. In cases where there's no mouse and keyboard support on PS5, using the DualSense keeps the conditions consistent on each platform. That said, 
Mouse and keyboard are supported on a handful of games on PlayStation 5, Call of Duty, Black Ops, Cold War, and Fortnite amongst them. So in these two cases, we used an ASUS ROG Chakram Core mouse as a direct USB input on both systems. Actually, this is what makes a game like Cold War simply perfect for testing. It supports NVIDIA Reflex on PC, but it also has a 120Hz refresh mode for PS5, and even mouse support for the console too. We're going to be kicking off with 60Hz testing though, because while a high refresh rate monitor can improve input lag, Reflex delivers improved response even on lower end displays. Booting Cold War's first campaign level, here's PlayStation 5 outputting at 60Hz with the ray tracing mode enabled. With the ROG mouse connected to our PS5, the average latency result firing into this corner from button to pixel comes in at 71.9 milliseconds. Overall, that's a decent turnout for Cold War, and 71.9 milliseconds is really the figure our PC has to beat. Switching to the RTX 3060 Ti equipped PC, we have medium ray traced local shadows enabled, just as they are on PS5. We use our approximated PS5 matched settings elsewhere with ultra textures, high SSR, low volumetrics and VSync enabled, and the result with reflex disabled, 92.7 milliseconds, around 20 milliseconds slower than the out of the box PlayStation 5 result. This leads us on to point number one. In many cases, PS5's latency result is better, faster, compared to a non-reflex enabled result on PC. We see it in Cold War, Destiny 2 and Deathloop, all despite using the exact same inputs and the game running at the exact same frame rate. As to why? Potentially this is due to Sony giving developers a fixed hardware target where the input stack is streamlined with lower level API access out of the box. Either way, PS5 often has very respectable results. However, this is where Reflex makes the difference. But before we get to that though, it's worth noting that there is actually an alternative option offered by NVIDIA, the Low Latency Mode, or LLM for short. Accessed via the GPU control panel, LLM isn't as effective, but we've included it in all of our results anyway. The advantages of LLM is that it can be applied to any game. It's a driver-based solution that doesn't need to be integrated into the game code, as is the case with Reflex. However, LLM does have some limits. Firstly, it only partially controls the render pipeline. And as you'll see in later games, this amounts to a kind of midway step towards what Reflex delivers. It's not as good, but it can improve responsiveness. Secondly, well, LLM doesn't support DX12 API modes in games. So for example, Cold War in its DX12 mode here, which we used for our testing, has latency averaging at 89 milliseconds with LLM Ultra enabled. Barely any change from our 92 millisecond reflex disabled results. Margin of error stuff, which does make sense given that LLM isn't actually engaging. It will of course work properly in DX11 titles, and that bears out in our results for Fortnite, God of War and Destiny 2, which are all using DX11 in our tests. All of those with LLM enabled show a clear reduction in input lag. But what about reflex then? Well, there's actually a reflex boost option, which lowers latency even further than regular reflex by keeping the GPU at a fixed clock speed. Think of this as similar to the prefer maximum performance option in the NVIDIA control panel. So it works by overriding the power saving features of the GPU, meaning that it's always operating at peak clock speeds. It's a power hungry approach then and achieves some small extra gains. So yes, we've set all games to this reflex boost mode, but I will say that a typical reflex result will be very comparable and obviously much more energy efficient in terms of GPU utilization. Still, the results speak for themselves. With reflex boost enabled, you get a rapid 57.2 millisecond result on a 60 Hertz display, again with VSync enabled. Enabling both LLM and reflex at the same time doesn't do anything extra. Uh, reflex overrides the LLM setting, but this 57 millisecond result at last pushes past the 71 milliseconds on PS5 for Cold War. And if we disable VSync on PC as well, that result drops even further to 43.1 milliseconds. When disabling VSync, 
the whole game engine is essentially unlocked to run at the fastest possible level of performance until it hits CPU, GPU, or maybe even memory bandwidth bottlenecks. Combine this unlocked performance with reflex and you get the fastest possible response at the expense of often eye-rending screen tearing. Alternatively, running unlocked but with a high refresh rate G-Sync or VRR display can also deliver a similar latency advantage but without the tearing. In Cold War's case, the best way to beat PS5's latency times is clearly to use reflex technology and it's seriously rapid. Also, it's interesting to note that while LLM doesn't support DX12, so therefore doesn't do much for Cold War in this test, it does help in other titles, often getting kind of halfway towards a reflex-like result. Case in point, sticking to a 60Hz output, here's a look at Fortnite, again tested with keyboard and mouse. PS5 pushes a response time of 96.8 milliseconds, but the non-reflex test actually begins at an even lower 90.6 millisecond figure. From here, it only gets better. LLM notably makes an impact at 66.5 milliseconds, and then switching reflex boost on in-game, the net result, 35 milliseconds on PC, reflex boost enabled, easily giving us our fastest 60 hertz result of all of our tests, a full 60 millisecond faster in terms of response than PlayStation 5. It's worth adding that Fortnite in its reflex boost mode uh, essentially optimizes for fully CPU bound cases, which may explain why the result is just so rapid. Sticking to the 60 hertz testing, next up let's take a look at God of War. This game was used by Nvidia's marketing to demonstrate the advantages of Reflex, specifically in how lower latency improves the combat experience. The example here sees Reflex offering a better timed dodge from Kratos in a side-by-side -side comparison. The game even features extensive tools in its PC menus to assist with the LDAP measurements. It's a crucial extra since there's no muzzle flash or immediate change in luminance after an attack is made for the LDAP sensor to pick up on. However, the issue for our testing of course is that PlayStation 5 doesn't offer those same LDAP options in its own menus because, well, reflex isn't a thing on consoles. And so in this case, we've settled on a traditional high-speed camera test. Here, we use a 240 FPS camera as we make an L1 button press to use the guard move, and then we count the frames manually to the first sign of actual movement from Kratos. Using a DualSense controller on both PC and PS5, the result on PS5 is an average 112 milliseconds, up against the higher 123 milliseconds on PC without reflex. It only gets better on PC from here though. LLM mode takes us to 73 milliseconds, a big enough boost already, but with reflex boost enabled we're down just a shade to 72 milliseconds, both options improving on the console version by quite a margin. And if you're so inclined, we get 46 milliseconds once VSync's disabled with the game engine running unlocked. Yes, there's screen tearing, but again, a high refresh rate display with VRR or G-Sync support offers up latency advantages without the tearing. Rounding out the list at 60 Hz is Destiny 2 and Deathloop, again tested on the DualSense controller. It's worth stressing that the DualSense results here are taken with the controller being used wirelessly on both PC and PS5. Curiously, the wired input on PC gives higher latency results than wireless, something that doesn't happen when used with PS5. Otherwise, a mouse and keyboard gets you slightly better latency results on PC. But yes, for consistency with PS5, we're using a matched input type, and that's the DualSense pad. You can see the results echo in God of Wars, but there are a few highlights. Firstly, uh, well, we've got to congratulate Bungie on its work with Destiny 2 on PS5. It puts in the most rapid response times at 60 Hz we've seen in our selection of titles, with a 54 millisecond result. And ultimately, it's only possible to match that 54 millisecond result on PC once Reflex Boost is enabled. Secondly, Deathloop has amongst the highest baseline latency times we saw. PlayStation 5 sits at 131 milliseconds, and PC is even worse off at 150 without reflex enabled. Toggling reflex boost on though, that drops the figure significantly to a much more respectable 94 milliseconds. For the absolute best latency times, there's only so far 60 hertz output can take you. 
So what if we use the 120 hertz modes for each of these games? Except for God of War, all of the console versions of these titles have 120 hertz support, and it's at higher display refresh rates that Nvidia's Reflex Tech really excels. And there are no bad results here, and even with Reflex disabled on PC, this is a surefire way to boost response times. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War on PS5, for example, gets us a 44.9 millisecond return, up against 32.8 milliseconds on a PC with Reflex enabled. And it goes one better once VSync is disabled, down to a rapid 23.6 latency time on PC, the fastest results in all of our testing. As for Fortnite, a 48 millisecond reading on PlayStation 5 at 120 Hz drops to 31.4 on PC with Reflex, and likewise for Destiny 2, 48.8 milliseconds on PS5 dropping down to 34.2 on a Reflex enabled PC. So when it comes to the 120 Hz tests then, PC and PS5 are generally much closer in returns in terms of overall latency. Still, once Reflex is engaged, PC sees up to around a 16 millisecond lead over the console equivalent. Better yet, disabling VSync squeezes that latency time down still further. That's fine margins by the time you get to the uh, low 30s and 20s. Without doubt, all of the results at 120 Hz are snappy. Uh, I guess the real highlight here for PC users is playing God of War at 120 Hz. With reflex mode engaged at the higher refresh rate, sits at 45 milliseconds in latency. PlayStation 5 doesn't have any way to compete here. It genuinely makes a difference to the feel of combat, as you'd expect, compared to the 112 milliseconds on PlayStation 5 with its locked 60 Hz output. In fact, God of War illustrates inherent advantages for the PC platform more generally. Yes, we have a bunch of titles here we can compare between PlayStation 5 and PC, but the point is that on PC, the vast majority of games out there can run completely unlocked, and the higher your CPU and GPU performance, the higher the frame rate, and in turn, the faster your response. With Reflex, PC can outperform PS5 at both 60 and 120 Hz, but 165 Hz displays are now commonplace. 240, 360 Hz screens are also available. So yeah, while it's great to see 120 Hz support in console titles, it's only a subset of games that support it, while PC titles that don't fully support unlocked frame rates are thankfully few and far between. So the takeaway is that Reflex works. The extent of the input lag reduction varies from game to game, but even up against a fixed platform like PS5, manages to outperform consoles in like-for-like -like testing with the potential to push further depending on your kit. Even relatively new additions to the Reflex supported list like God of War do benefit from lower latency. It's not just about esports or competitive first-person shooters. A more responsive game is generally a better gameplay experience overall. And even if a title doesn't support Reflex, uh, LLM, low latency mode, still seems to offer some value in many scenarios in titles running under DX11. With Reflex, enabling it in supported games is only a positive. In fairness, the results show PlayStation 5 pushes already respectable latency times in many titles, but Reflex, once enabled, typically vaults ahead, sometimes substantially so. The Fortnite test in particular sticks out, a 60 millisecond lead in response for PC using the same mouse and keyboard setup, and for a cross-platform competitive online title, that's a significant gameplay advantage. Add in the potential for higher refresh rate monitors on PC above 120 Hz, and also technologies like Nvidia's DLSS, which can help pave the way to higher frame rates if needed, and there's plenty of options in reducing latency in PC gaming. The only real downside to Reflex, well, it's simply not supported in every game. To get these results, Reflex needs to be plumbed in at the engine level, but the results it delivers are measurable, palpable, and genuinely improve the way that games play. But that's it, that's the video, and therefore that's all from me. Please do like, subscribe, and share the content if you enjoyed it and ring the bell for those notionally instant uh, notifications whenever new content from Digital Foundry drops. But that's all from me. Thanks for watching.